Do you remember a more peaceful time when our lives weren't constantly infiltrated with brands, products and unhealthy promotions? Me either. I'm sat here listening to my Nescafe clock radio about to neck a shot from an alien shot glass. <sighs> Promotional items have been with us since the dawn of capitalism. So when I got hold of a mouse filled with antidepressants, I was hardly surprised. Actually, that's a lie. I was quite surprised and that's because over in the UK, having profit tied up with our medication feels in poor taste. That's why <clears throat> certain governments are doing it behind the scenes, but that's a story for another day and indeed another channel. But across the Atlantic, that's exactly what we have here. This is a promotional mouse filled with plastic representations of an antidepressant. Presumably so the instant you look away from the distractions of your screen and remember how horribly depressed you are, you are instantly reminded that you can always buy a batch of Paxil CR Paroxetine and get back on track. <sighs> what a caring world we live in. But it turns out in the 90s and noughties, hospitals and surgeries, particularly in North America, were rife with promotional items of this nature. Clipboards, clocks, clothing. So as the PC became more and more essential to the clinical process, it wasn't long before the humble mouse was subpoenaed for this task. Of course, in this instance, the customer were medical practitioners, and what better way to get them to prescribe Paxil CR than have it plastered over every free item that could be chucked at them by drug reps. Anyone who's heard of OxyContin's marketing strategies, including sensational listening like this Swing is a Live album, will know the inherent problems with that. Honestly, did this really work? Were people wooed by a crappy CD with the tagline Swing in the right direction with OxyContin? Really? But apparently a 2006 study by the Journal of the American Medical Association indicated that even cheap gifts can influence doctors and even reach their children. Jesus Christ. And so in 2008, the pharmaceutical industry agreed to a moratorium on these items. Of course, that didn't stop the problem and there were loopholes allowing educational gifts and less tangible items like paid for meals. But this is not a video about the drug industry because outside of pharmaceuticals, there's a much bigger world of promotion. But since the 90s, they've all had one thing in common. Yep, the computer mouse. We can really categorize these fiendish promotional navigational devices into two sections. The first are these oil and water filled devices. These things are all much of a muchness and have been around since the 90s. You can even still buy them today should you wish to woo your customers at a convention or just by offering them a free mouse if they buy a new Volkswagen. Certainly takes the bite out of spending 30 grand on a new Passat, right? You'll find these mice in boxes like this. Aqua, TM. This is actually a newer variety as it's USB for Windows 98, 2000, ME or XP or Mac and appears to be made by Liquid Star, as you can see under the warning label. Along with the mouse, we get a user manual soul manual soul, which tells us the scroll mouse can bring you the most comfort and increase your work efficiency as well. Presumably if you're not well, then it won't. Some generic software here and the mouse itself. Let's talk about Volkswagen. Perhaps let's talk about Volkswagen's crappy promotional products. How about that? I wouldn't mind if it was a quality item, but they're not even that ergonomic unless you have the hands of a seven year old. That being said, they're quite endearing. Look at that little VW badge just floating about. Maybe VW isn't the best example, but there's something quite mesmerizing about seeing a fab lolly floating about on your desk or a FedEx van, a plane or even some blood cells. 
Oh, okay, we're back on the pharmaceuticals again. That didn't take long, did it? Most of these mice are PS2, some are USB, but they are all of the rollerball variety, which means digging those mouse cleaning skills out from the back of your mind. Easy does it. By the way, if you've got a USB mouse and you need to plug it into an old computer, these converters are really handy, but depending on the mouse and the motherboard, they won't always work. Success was quite low with my Compaq Pro Linear, so you might need to mix things up a bit or try a dedicated active converter. Interestingly, some of these mice seem much better built than others, even though they're all pretty much the same. Ooh, there is some nice wheel action on this one, actually. That's quite nice. Some have a much more satisfying scroll and click. And this one from Rossia Airlines is a mini version, which actually feels quite nice in the hand, although it does require some extensive finger arching to actually use. But I'm getting carried away. Let's move on to the second category of promotional mice, the big tamale, the bespoke category. A category where the ergonomics of each and every mouse are utterly and completely compromised in order to have some crappy callback to a brand. And let's begin with another drug-related product, because of course we are. This is a Viagra NASCAR mouse, created around 2001, when Viagra had a racing team sponsoring drivers like Mark Martin. But look at the actual state of it. Can you imagine using this for any reasonable length of time? If there's anything that's going to cause RSI, this is surely it. We've also got some software, the excitingly named mouse setup disc. Can't wait to get stuck into that one. Another rollerball and a PS2 connection. Let's see how it performs in the field. Nice. Middle button, no scroll wheel. Surprisingly, it's, it's, it feels quite nice. The only problem is this sharp spoiler digs into your hand. It's just like a, a thin stabber of plastic. Yeah, it's not great, but not as terrible as I expected. It's actually quite smooth. It has a high DPI and it's okay. It's fine, except for that spoiler digging into your wrist. The software is... It's a, it's a driver. That's it. But that's not as wild as this ride gets. Oh no, how about an actual coffee jar? I swear to God, these people are unhinged. Because that's where Nescafe decided to go. Yep, about the same time as Ian Wright was running out of petrol and dropping into a stranger's house for a cup, others were furiously shaking a load of plastic coffee about, trying to open Microsoft Word. And whilst questioning whether the ergonomics of a literal jar were appropriate for sliding around their desk all day. This one is optical and USB, so it's a bit more modern than the others. And don't worry, I was interested in that dried coffee as well. Handily, there's a filling hole on the back that can be unscrewed and the granules poured out. Mmm, grains. Yep, as I thought, it doesn't dissolve. It's literally just plastic chips. It's disappointing, but then if this was real coffee, it would just suck up moisture and turn into a congealed mess within the mouse, which is arguably worse. In the wild, though, this is an absolute horror show to use. This is just not pleasant. A mouse where it, it oh, the shape is horrible. It kind of goes in, but then out, and that, that doesn't feel natural at all. You either want it to go in and smaller, or just be the same size all over, not this horrendous... Ooh. The buttons feel like pressing fake nails into Play-Doh, and the shape feels like holding a particularly hefty, solidified dog turd. Would not recommend. But do you know what goes well with dog turds? Or coffee? Do you know what goes well with coffee? Yes, chocolate. Don't get turds and chocolate mixed up, it's not a good thing to do. But this is why we have the M&M's PC mouse featuring blue. Oh look, it's even got a best before date. 4th of May 2002, because that's how we do dates around here. 
That would be for the 125 gram packet of M&Ms included, rather than the actual mouse. Sadly, that packet is long gone, but the PS2 mouse is here looking fresh and clean. Let's try it out. Surprisingly, it doesn't feel too bad in the hand. The click is nice, it's responsive. It's it's not, it's okay. It just, it's a bit weird holding something which is so ridgy and knobbly in your hand. <laughs> Interestingly, American versions also got a neat little screensaver included in the package. I guess UK screens just weren't worth saving. Open in mouth, though not in hand. Hard pressed, hard shell, rattling together in bag upon bag. Aero is up next. Ah, bubbly chocolate. Here we've got a notepad, a finger mouse, a mouse mat, and an actual mouse, shrouded in brown velvet, and with the mouse cord coming out of its ass, Like an actual mouse. Honestly, this is a fuzzy fuck. It feels like a cat that's been shaved and had a couple of days worth of hair growth. It's... it's weird. You don't want the cord coming out of the tail, it just gets in the way. Yeah, that's that's not great. This is too much of a literal mouse. It's too pointy. It is 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 a pointy faced bastard. He's it's too much point. I mean, it would have been better to have it like this, and then the buttons on his ass. That actually feels better to hold as well. That would have been better. Click his ass, not his ears. Ah, uh, yes. The Kit Kat mouse. It's oval. It's oval. It's very oval. And besides the point that it's horrendous to hold, this one's a bit balked. The cursor always wants to move to the top of the screen. Cleaning didn't help, and I haven't got the inclination to attempt any advanced maintenance here. So how about the mouse driver? Just drive it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've got a nice presentation box pointing to a website that actually does still exist, which is quite rare. We'll come back to that in a second. But yes, you guessed it, this is a mouse in the shape of a driver. It's a hefty lump, and this particular one has Nevada Jobs Golf printed across it. Interestingly, the website is listed as a .co.uk address, when you wouldn't expect that with Nevada in the title, but it links back to a golf chain which operated in the early noughties. Cool. I imagine the main customer for these were actual golf shops or clubs, giving them away to members, maybe as a sign-up gift or something, maybe even as a prize for getting a hole in one, wherever your imagination wants to take you, really. As for the mouse design itself, well, as the website says, there's an entire backstory. Apparently, it was a collaboration between Kyle Harrison and Ed McClung. This perfect gift drove revenues of over $1 million. How the heck it did that is probably worth a video in itself. A video that I probably won't be making, because you can just check out the website. I'm more interested to see how these mice perform. Perfect for playing a bit of Tiger Woods. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> that is not a nice shape. It's just so wide in all the wrong places. There's no thumb support. And that you just it spreads your whole hand across the right button. You've got like two fingers resting on it. Oh, it's just oh no. No, I mean it, it tracks well enough. It's got a good ball, which is what you want for golf, but not a nice experience. Yeah. It uh, it's crap. Next. Which brings us onto this velvet box and an incredibly bling mouse created by none other than Wallace Silversmiths. Honestly, if you're stuck on ideas for your anniversary, you can't go wrong with an engraved mouse. Saying that, presumably it did go very wrong for LBN's partner, hence why I was able to buy it off eBay for 10 quid. Apart from the silver plating, this is a much more conventional beast underneath, and therefore makes for a much better mouse. It's like a Lamborghini Contash. 
Yeah, that's nice. That's much better. It's got a nice click. Feels nice in the hand. Moves well. No messing about here. Just silver plate it. Put your initials on it. Good to go. The one thing I would note is the silver plating draws heat away from your hand rapidly and therefore it feels incredibly cold to touch. Not one to use in the winter. But actually, it feels like the perfect mouse to use with a fast-paced shmup. Which makes me think about a new game called Soul Cresta. Yes, big thank you to Platinum Games and Soul Cresta for sponsoring this video. This is one I'm really excited about because Soul Cresta is such a good game. Released on Steam, PS4 and Switch on the 22nd of February, here we've got the first of the Neo Classic Arcade series. A freeform docking and shooting experience which has so many nostalgic elements that I can barely keep track myself. You pilot the Yamato, comprised of three smaller ships which you can use to change your attack patterns and arrange formations to create the most formidable attack strategy. I've had a whole heap of fun with this. There's caravan mode, online leaderboards and also a vertical display mode for those who yearn that arcade experience of the 90s, and who doesn't yearn for that? This really is one to check out, and you can use the link in the description to grab your copy today. Now, this is a Boss DS1 distortion pedal. This is it off, and this is it on. This is a Boss DS1 mouse. This is it off. And this is it on. Yes, at some point in the noughties, Roland Corporation decided to make their Boss guitar pedal into a mouse. Why? I have no idea. But I imagine that some employee had a pedal sitting on their desk and went, Oh, that looks kind of like a mouse. And so we have this. They actually do a variety of them based on various pedals. It's an optical mouse, it's USB, and it's wobbly as hell. Well, the buttons are anyway. What in the world is going on with that? It's kind of neat that the scroll wheel is on the left-hand side, but there's nothing ergonomic about this setup whatsoever. Nothing. It's like holding a guitar pedal. That's not a mouse. It's a guitar pedal. There's a reason that they're different things, and they're designed different ways. It's clever, I suppose, but it's also an atrocious idea. So, that's promotional novelty mice from the 90s and noughties. What a time to be alive! I'm just thankful that I stuck to decent, standard ergonomic mice, which didn't destroy my hand. It's quite handy. Nice pun. It's crazy that some of these devices are still available, to be honest. I mean, who? Who in the world is using them? Anyway, I've got nothing else. That is it. So, until next time, I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo.